say that the impetus for my report was actually for Nick the last year that I uh, didn't attend and was almost my last near memory. So I, I just feel very lucky to be here today. Um, the impetus for my report was twofold. Holy large parachutes, polyethylene, low density polyethylene parachutes, and noticing that they would stick to my forearms as I was folding and cutting and out 40 inch shoots, 50 inch shoots for leg offing and leg, leg, egg offing and duration, other duration events. And then other events where 8th APD, which we had last there, where the shoot would eject, but the shoot would fall faster than the body and it would hit the ground before the body and you pick it up, you think, well, I must have melted something. You pick it up, the shoot just unfurls like there's nothing wrong. So that's, that's what this started with. So with the first slide here, what I did was I had to look at the role of static electricity. I had to also find out can electrostatic energy be added to shoots? And then can electrostatic energy be used in a repulsive manner to aid in the opening of the shoots? Meaning can I somehow use it to push the panels of the sheets together? We'll go to the next slide. Okay, this is um, a diagram showing the pellets that the low density polyethylene plastic is in before it's actually melted and extruded or pulled over rollers. Um, and the second uh, picture shows sort of the lattice structure of what the parachute material looks like at the atomic level. And with any conductor or anything that can conduct, electrons are going to move on the surface of the material, not readily through the volume of the material. If you do, then you've got something wrong and you start burning out wires and you don't want that. But that's, that's not what we're doing here. Okay, so we have pellets that are melted and extruded over rollers in the sheets. In the case of, uh, and uh, this, this is just a graphical representation of what's going on, so now you know what your parachute looks like at the atomic level. Um, here we have a, a, a situation where uh, we have the electrical properties of sheets. And um, let me look at my glasses on here. LLPD, which a lot of us use in competition, at, at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, has a 10 to the 16 uh, ohms per uh, centimeter resistance. And then you have mylar, which is 10 to the 18, which is two orders of magnitude greater, and then estes shoots, which are right in the middle. The reason why mylar has a higher resistance is because what they do is, when they take the low uh, density uh, polyethylene uh, material, they take molten aluminum and they spray that in a vapor over the sheets and they let it settle. Now, aluminum is highly, highly electronegative, meaning it wants to capture and hold on to electrons more readily. It'll still share them, but you have to do generally something, um, you have to put a little bit more effort and energy to tug uh, electrons away from them. Okay, the next slide is the trivioelectric scale. Now, the tri trivio uh, refers to rubbing. Electric, well, electrons. And I wanted to highlight in yellow the, uh, the case for polyethylene, which is way over here. It is a contributor of electrons. Notice over here that things like human hand skin contact is a great receptor. We have a our, the pH of our own bodies is, is a little bit acidic. So we are always attracting electrons to our flesh, and this is what happens when you go across a carpet or you go out of a car door on a you know, very cold uh, day where static electricity can build up. You touch something and there's a mark. It's like a shock. Okay? So this is fine and dandy. Uh, here we have a slide that's just a general basic understanding of what a, a capacitor between plates, and in this case, envision this as your shoot material, might do when you have one part of your parachute that has a net positive charge and the other part of your parachute has a net, net negative charge. You can actually develop a field in between the, the particular panels. Okay? And of course, Coulomb's law, which is very similar to uh, Newton's law of gravitation, except uh, we uh, we do a weird thing with epsilon naught, and uh, that's the uh, primitivity. Yeah, primitivity. Yeah, primitivity of space. In this case, 
air and a vacuum are very, very similar, so we go ahead and use the, the value for a vacuum. In this slide, um, I decided to go ahead and just take a electron charge and go ahead and see what happens when I have a, a positive charge and a negative charge, just one uh, electron, and see what kind of force I have. Now, the force to us isn't very much. It's only uh, 10 to the uh, 2.3 times uh, 10 to the negative 19 newtons, but in order in, in, to an electron that only weighs 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, that's a tremendous force. That's actually a relativistic type of force. And this is why your computers and such, your electrical uh, hardware get very, very hot and require heat sinks. Okay, so let's move on here. Uh, in this slide, we use Gaussians, the Gauss, uh, Gauss's law that tells us that the amount of electromagnetic, or in this case, electrical field going into a volume is going to be equal to the same amount going out of that volume. You don't get nothing for free. You don't get free energy out of this stuff. So let's just move on to here. This is just a way to compute the electric field between two plates by using Gauss's law. And the, the slide is very self-explanatory. I'm sorry, I'm having to rush through this because I have a lot to say. Okay, items to take note of. LLPD, uh, the, low, the, uh, the low density um, uh, polyethylene shoots, can and do behave as capacitors. They do have an electrical property. The human body has a potential difference across our skins of uh, anywhere from 10 to 100 millivolts. Uh, the act of rubbing objects far apart on the trivial electric series is generally a micro. Uh, the electric field is independent of the distance between the two plates as long as the distance is small relative to the size of the plates. And that's just a way of just saying you don't have any outside influences affecting the field inside. And electric fields that cause arcing in the air to occur, the, the, this occurs when the field streams reach about 3.0 times 10 to the 6 uh, volts per year. Like shocking somebody, you know, your kid, you're, you generate and you go touch a friend. Or, you know, all right, so what I did was I said, well, let's look at the worst case scenario. Let's say I have a parachute that's 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters in diameter, and I'm going to assume that one of the folds is negative charge, the other fold is a positive charge, and that's, that'll never happen, but I just want to look at the worst case scenario. So I go through the equations that I've already uh, figured out. I, I compute the field in there. I take... Uh, the amount of charge that I have there, just a, a microcoulomb, and it turns out that there's actually 28.2 newtons of force binding these panels together if that situation were to occur. Think of it the same way with two pieces of glass. You take a small, like thin, small couple drops of water, you put the water together. Two minutes. Two. Uh, okay, well, let me. All right, here we go. Um, so I said, okay, well, let's just go to an inch. Let's say we have an inch squared. It turns out that doing an inch squared, we still get about 18.1 grams of force holding the panels or holding surfaces together. Well, a lot of our competition models weigh far, far less than the 18 grams. Aha, uh -huh, maybe this is why when my chute falls before my rocket, I don't have enough weight. So let's move on. The experiment. I took a, I constructed a 5.6 gram chute. I use a insulated surface to fold. I use this guy right here. This is a usually a bait launcher, but I converted it into a bait chute launcher. Charge it up to 10 psi, which is normal for black powder motors. I install my parachute with the plug in here. Shoot it out, and I pretend like I'm ejecting over and over again. This is an explanation of what I did. I did a case where I rubbed the parachute material with silicon to give it electrons, and then a case where I just used neutral grounding. So we're gonna go, I did my statistical analysis, I did my variance, okay, conclusions. The data does in fact uh, follow a normalized distribution that can be accepted statistically. So it's not just garbage, it's actually real. Uh, the electron path distribution follows a more Narrowly, a narrow distribution curve than the non-electron uh, pack chute. So this means that the electron pack chute could have gone either way, whereas me forcing electrons under the material tended to force it into an open position. Uh, further research, the, the flyer could come up with a simpler way of, of putting uh, electrons under the chute by making the inside of the body tube uh, out of a material that is an easy donor. 
uh, talc powder might in fact set up a condition for panels not touching and therefore you get a, a, a capacitance, a capacitance situation. So talc powder may not be your friend like you think it is. And actually, static electricity loves dry things. It hates wet things. Wet things allow charges to, to, to follow ground. If you're dry, no, you don't have that. Um, okay, time's up. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to talk. Okay, I did 50 where I would take the shoe, and I'm, all, I'm wearing gloves when I'm doing this, so I'm being very careful about the electrostatic buildup and potential. 50 with no induced packing, and then 50 with an induced packing. So, uh, and I, I like this, this, this solution I came up with because if I flew it, I'm constantly changing the parachute, I'm melting it, I'm, Losing, it's not in the same condition every time I fly it. This way, it's pretty much, ex you know, except for atoms, and I'm not measuring that, the parachute is unchanged. Now, what percentage opened when you put the electrons on, and what percentage you put 90%, I got a 90% percentage of opening when I pack <coughs> the chute in this situation. I got a 66% result when I didn't uh, add any electrical or any uh, electrons to it. So there was definitely a, a drastic difference between shoot opening fully and shoot not opening fully. And this is probably too hard for you to explain in 30 seconds. I'll try. But you, there were several different reasons to these you gave in your presentation. Some of them had ohms as their units, some had ohms per square meter, mm -hmm. and some had ohms dash centimeter. So can you tell me what the difference is and which one is the one that matters for this situation? In this situation, it's going to be ohms per centimeter. Divided and, by centimeter? Uh, yeah, no, 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 ohms times centimeters. Time centimeters yes. What is that? What's the definition of that? What's <laughs> okay, let me think about this. Uh, it's Well, it's going to be the impedance, of course. You're going, it's going to give you the impedance. It's going to tell us how easy current can actually flow across the surface of the material. So. You're the old cannon, the chute was inside a cardboard tube and rubber nose inside a cardboard tube, it wasn't like down in the PVC or No, 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 yes. Uh, I made sure to keep this, this, this was mounted on a, uh, I, I had a, a wooden table and uh, I would make sure to make that this would not get any electrostatic energy from anywhere else except for when the experiment was running. So I have a, this is actually, the air is stored in here, sent through here, there's a, a foam piston plug that then pushes it out of this. And the big paper, it's electrically and insulated. And you said you rubbed your shoe with silicon? Silicon, yes. Silicon is silicone. Silicon. Okay, what do you mean you probably silicon? Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Uh, don't don't take this in any way than just information. Uh, there's two ways. I did. I, I I finally decided to go to Walmart, and over in the ladies section, there are silicon things that. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, but you can go there. They're palm size. And they grip really well, and you can actually dis. I'm sorry. That's where I got the silicone. I didn't like this stuff from eBay because that tends to be more of a sheet. I think that may be silicone. Silicone, then. I'm sorry. Silicone. Your reports are silicone. Okay. Sorry. Right. I just need to know what to go buy. Well, <laughs> it's clear, and it's, it's All right. flexible. I, uh, okay, okay. You didn't bring one to the. No. <laughs> but you see, here's a secret. Fridays and Saturdays after 10, you go to Walmart, you can do anything. You can go fit in. A man running around in the women's area. Is, is an idiot.
the moisture is actually beneficial. Have you given any thought uh, to, to misting, taking a spray bottle and misting the shoe for your full? Yes, with alcohol. So that it evaporates. Uh, alcohol is in a water solution. It's, it has a, hot, a very low evaporation temperature. So you could do that. Um, that. That's one way. A few years ago, I was in a data center and I see these misters. I'm thinking, why are you guys spraying water in your computers? Well, it's because it, water allows a pathway for static electricity. So static electricity can be your friend or it can be your enemy. It can be your enemy. And I, I figured that out when I'm having panels of shoot literally lift with my forearm sticking to me and I'm wondering what the hell am I, am I is it wet? No, it's the static it's a static charge and, and the fact that we're a great receptor of electrons and our polyethylene shoots are great gifts. So. Okay. okay. I think we're probably out of time so we can't have audience questions, but uh, you can talk to Jonathan yes. another time. Let me ask just one. Okay. How did you get that on the plane, or did you drive? I, I, I drove. I drove. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give plans for this because I had to buy the plans from a gentleman off of eBay. But if you go on eBay and look for bait launchers, because everything below here they take out on deep sea shipping boats, and they, they shoot bait out to the uh, into the ocean to attract whatever it is they're trying to catch. I just decided, well, hey, if I take this section of body to the BT-70, I can use the same parachute over and over again and not change my conditions. Okay, thank you. All right, so thank you.